Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. He's Burr. And he's Red. All right. Watch for episode two. Damn sight better than the first one. Yeah, so I guess if we could say an episode for someone to start off it, it would be episode two. I think it might be worth it to watch episode one, but I would say watch the first two episodes. Yeah. But they, have, they do go, 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 kind of go into part one, part two sequential uh, order, considering part one ends with them discovering a problem. Yeah. Uh, that, so, yeah. I think that if you don't want to watch more of it by that point, you might like it more later on, but it might not be worth your time. I also but, recommend the sub, considering, uh, last video I mentioned that the, uh, the sub has more details considering it's the original version of the dub. We actually saw one of those details, which was explaining what... A little in, uh, bit about the heliotropes. Yeah, which we didn't learn anything about until episode 12, the dub. Yeah. But, so, if you're just following us along, you're just watching the episodes with us, for some strange reason, yeah, why? one of those 40 people, um... Or maybe more by then. Yeah. So, I would recommend... Watching it, and if you're not a big fan of it, then maybe give it another chance. But or go to Dofus. Yeah, uh, there's just a lot of a lot of stuff in the series. Watch. So basically, general plot of this is this one does have more of a plot. Basically, yeah. they're going to go solve the problem that was introduced to the last episode, which was little black, tiny little droplet algae combinations are turning everyone into trees. Po postals. Po porch. But I something, don't know. It's P O something. Poultress or something. That, well, like I said, they're more or less just little... Little black elf. thingies. Yeah. The Moltres is... Um, <laughs> so basically... Team Valor. So basically, they go to the forest. They meet up with Amalia and Evangeline. Um, they discover this tree is sending them out because he's been hurt. His brother has been killed. And... Um, he said she just wants revenge. Well, what he wants to do is he wants to tie the fate of humans to the fate of the trees... And also probably a little bit of vengeance in there. Yeah. But Amalia convinces him that if they're trees, they can't do jack shit. So, in addition to healing him with her healing hands, she helps... Uh, she has the Moltreses. Um, he tells them to change everybody back, and they do. Then Nox shows up... Or he's just been standing the entire time. While I like to believe that he's just been staying in the village the entire time they've been gone just waiting. Hey, he had, there's a little bit of travel time involved. He's probably been standing there since they left. True. Um, so Nox shows up, or has been standing there, and basically says, You go, you better answer some questions. And uh, he starts uh, starts threatening his friends and threatening Hugo, but Ali Bear, because he's a badass and just generally awesome, is like, You're not going to hurt my son, breaks through the time control, and starts wailing on Nox until Nox has to teleport away. Yes, but sadly, leaves Alibur cursed. Yeah, he just grew really old, didn't he? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, what else could a time wizard do? I to make him go really old or really young. <laughs> and it just turns him young, and it's just like, <laughs> hello, ladies. <laughs> um, and plot-wise, that pretty much is episode yeah, it's, two. Yeah, it's a very simple plot, but there's a couple of cool fight scenes. There's a lot of good little character moments. We're introduced to some more characters. And a bit of satire with everyone calling out their attacks like a freaking anime. Yeah, I, I, that's like the only time in this show this happens. There is another anime moment in, in season two where they like to play a completely different song because most fight scenes play a variation of the show's opening theme, but they just play like some completely weird, purely Japanese or K-pop, J-pop song while they're fighting. Um. So yeah, so what, now we've got the whole, um, I mean not every character, but the main cast and crew is intact, right? Yes, the main brotherhood of the Tofu. There's only one character missing, but he is rarely used. I mean, we will, we'll get to him when we get to the episode. Yes. But the brother of Tofu is Hugo, Sir Chispin Percidal, Evangeline, Amalia Shramshard, and Rule Strood. What's Evangeline's last name? I think we ever learned. Um, Hugo and Amalia, well, no, Hugo and Evangeline don't have last names. Or at least the ones we don't know of. So, yeah. Uh, it's a good conclusion to the plot that's been set up for the first episode. Uh, it's a simple plot, but it's enjoyable. It's just to introduce everything. Yeah. It's it's set up, and in addition, it sets up the next arc, which is finding Hugo's real family. Yeah, which is the main arc of the show. One thing I do like, though, well, for the first season. Well, yeah, because really, once they find Hugo's family, it's pretty much just get to Sadiq Kingdom and stop Knox. Yeah. That pretty much is the real arc for the... Uh... But one thing I do like is that Hugo has a little thought, like, Ali Bear, you'll always be my real dad. And I like that, because just because he's not biologically Hugo's dad, he raised the kid. Yeah, so that is a nice touch. I mean, that... I guess I was a bit wrong. The show is partially about characters, too, because it's about world and characters. It just seems so real at times. Yeah, it's... 
I don't know. It's it's a very enjoyable show, and it similar to My Little Pony, it's got a bunch of honestly good people. Grovey, Trista Penn, whatever you want to call him, he's he's a nice guy. He's an idiot, but he's a nice guy. He's a very nice idiot. Evan Evangeline is probably the smartest of the bunch, excepting maybe Rule. Actually, and, this pick up a good point because. Think back when we first watched the show, I think you mentioned you didn't like Amalia, and I think it took you to, like, late season one to season two. Yeah, because she, she was kind of bitchy. Yeah, she... Well, she's a princess. She originally played off the princess archetype. Yeah, she, she was a little hoity-toity. Yeah. But she gets better. Yeah. And Evangeline, she's... I guess she becomes less uptight. That, I guess that's her development, because in the first yeah. episode, she is very uptight. I mean, at the end, she said, I will try to treat you like a friend, not a princess. Honestly, when she said the line, I got that more as kind of, are you sure you're gonna let me? Like, that's the vibe I was getting. It's like, because I'm just going to treat you like anybody else now. But it, overall, like, and even then, Amalia might be kind of bitchy, but she's not bad. Like, when it, well, like, look what she did with the tree. Yeah, she's basically the hero of this episode. She, I mean, everyone else probably would have just fought it out through any situation. And she decided, no, I need to heal you. I need to try to undo, I need to show you that there is kindness in humanity. So overall, bunch of good people. Even Rule, who's a greedy asshole... He's Rule a nice is a greedy guy. asshole. He's the a nice funniest. Guy. If eventually he's the smartest, Rule's probably the funniest. Yeah. Well, any other thoughts, Bernard? Uh, no, that, like, that pretty much covers it for episode two because I'm trying to think was there any other like any other details that wasn't mentioned when we first watched it. I think. No, that's just about it. So. See y'all later. See you later when we meet the Black Crow.